Hi, everyone. Um, I appreciate everybody tuning in today. We're going to talk about uh, a case study uh, using atypical bladder cytology to illustrate how I use CX bladder in my practice. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Evan Goldfisher. I'm the director of research and co-founding CEO of Premier Medical Group in the Hudson Valley. Uh, and I've been using CX bladder in my practice for quite some time, and my partners have also uh, adapted the test. I hope this serves to kind of synthesize what's already been talked about, about the test and how it might be incorporated into an office practice. So our agenda over the next few minutes will be to review different clinical scenarios where CX bladder is appropriate to order, to understand the clinical need for ordering CX bladder, to discuss how CX bladder test results impact patient outcomes, and to try and gain some insight into pers and perspectives on clinical utility of CX bladder test. So this is a real patient uh, who's in my practice right now. He's a 64 year old male and he presented with asymptomatic microscopic hematuria. His PSA is 2.64. He has some mild hypertension, dyslipidemia and BPH, kind of typical 64 year old in my practice. No family history of kidney, bladder or prostate cancer. And he takes one 81 milligram baby aspirin per day, but no other blood thinners. But he does have a significant smoking history, one pack of cigarettes per day for about 40 years. So um, given that history, I performed a CAT scan with and without contrast that was normal. I did a white light cystoscopy, which showed lateral lobe uh, hyperplasia of the prostate, but no bladder tumors. And I sent out a cytology and I got back a cytology that was atypical. No abnormal cells, but atypical cytology. So given his history of smoking, the microscopic hematuria, uh, I was certainly concerned. Um, might there be cancer in the bladder that I just couldn't see yet? Should I do a blue light cystoscopy? And should that be ordered as the next step here? Now, for those of you who are doing blue light cystoscopy, uh, you know that the patient has to come in about an hour before the procedure, undergo a bladder catheterization where the medicine is instilled, and then sit in your office for about an hour while the medicine coats the bladder, and then you perform the cystoscopy. So it's really not something you can do on every single patient. It uh, can be disruptive to the flow in the office, uh, does take extra steps, and the patient does have to uh, hang out in an exam room for about an hour. So you want to be responsible and judicious on how you use this technology. So in my case, the choice was do a blue light cystoscopy uh, uh, or uh, have the patient come back in um, uh, several months for a repeat cytology and see what's going on. Instead, I chose to order a CX uh, bladder detect test. And as you can see on the screen, uh, it came back rather high. So this was very, very, very concerning to me given his history that he could have urothelial carcinoma uh, and I just didn't see it on white light cystoscopy. It wasn't visible yet. And just remember CX bladder detect is ordered on a voided urine. They can do it in the office while they're there or, or they can do it from their home. The test can be mailed to them. They collect the urine sample and send it back. And during uh, the time of COVID, when patients are trying to reduce their uh, uh, visits to office, this might be a, a way to go. But anyway, we did the test and came back abnormal. Uh, I was concerned, so I did a blue light cystoscopy. And there were several abnormal lesions that were found in the bladder. Uh, biopsies were conducted and cauterized uh, and sent out for pathology. Um, and the outcome was uh, that several of the biopsies revealed carcinoma in situ. So I started the patient on an induction course of uh, BCG. Uh, and because of the CX bladder test, I did the blue light cystoscopy and I found the carcinoma in situ before it was visible on white light cystoscopy, diagnosing him probably several months, if not more, before the lesions would actually be visible. So again, our goal here was to avoid unnecessary blue light cystoscopy and to be respectful and responsible in how we use that technology. Um, I was able to do that by using the CX bladder detect test, which is simple, accurate, and cost-effective. Um, the results in this case did support the need to conduct the blue light cystoscopy. Uh, and as a result, I was able to detect carcinoma in situ 2 earlier, which uh, gives me an opportunity for better patient outcomes. Uh, and therefore, I've incorporated the CX bladder test and the CX bladder monitor, uh, which is a separate discussion, into my practice 
uh, and most of my partners are using the test at this time as well. Thank you very much for tuning in.